So what I'm going to do now is give an overview of Spring Web MVC, and we'll talk about how it is one of the variants that's supported with Spring Boot 2.0 that gives you certain characteristics. So Spring Web MVC is built on the Servlet API, and it's designed using a synchronous IO architecture with a one request per thread model or a thread per request model, depending on how you want to look at that. So the idea basically here is it uses a lot of stuff that may be familiar to people who've worked with older versions of Java web technology, and then it provides this synchronous interface to wrap around that and access it. What that means is that each request is handled by a thread on the server side that blocks until it's able to fully process the request. And then likewise, typically on the client side, when you invoke a method call, it will block the calling thread as well. So here's a simple example that's based, based loosely on our uh, flights, microservices implementation of our flight listing app, where we have a client that sends requests to the server to find different flights. And you can see here, the request will go over, talk to the server. There may be a, obviously a database lookup that might take a while to run if there's a large number of airline databases to query. And as a consequence, the, the thread on the server that's handling that request will be blocked and it won't be able to service other requests or other responses. And, and likewise, on the client side, the client thread will be blocked waiting for that to return. So one of the consequences of this, uh, there's several consequences. One is sort of a, a positive consequence. When we have blocking client threads and blocking server threads, that eliminates or minimizes the need for end-to-end -end rate control because it's sort of naturally rate limited by the request response nature of the interaction. The downside is that you may need a large number of threads to handle bursty clients. If you have a bunch of clients and they send data in bursts at different times, you may need lots of threads. And I, I believe there's a, like a, the default that comes with spraying out of the box is something like 200 threads. And at that point, you can't handle anything more. But even creating 200 threads is uh, excessive in most environments these days, especially when you consider the alternatives that we'll talk about when we talk about web MVC. With respect to how communication takes place with Spring MVC, you typically use just good old Java collection types, things that you're obviously familiar with, you know and love from previous experience, things like Java lists or Java maps, those kinds of collections. Here again is just a very simple example from the flight controller that's in the flights microservices app variant where we have this, this endpoint mapping, endpoint uh, method called find departure dates. And it takes the departure airport and the arrival airport and it gives back a list of dates in local date format. Now, what's interesting about this, and, and again, this will make more sense when we compare and contrast it with the alternative, is that these endpoints send and return these Java collections in one fell swoop. Unless, of course, you go to a lot of extra effort to program things to be sort of split between requests and responses, which we're not going to do for the moment because there's much better ways to do that. So you can see here the client sends a request for the airports and it gets back a list of airports in response and it's in one fell swoop. And so as a consequence, if you, for example, had lots of airports that you were getting back, then the latency on the client side could suffer because you have to wait for the server to pack all those elements into the list and then send it back in one big chunk. And so you may end up with a, a longer delay than you might like, especially if you can get data that comes back that you can start to display to the client while the rest of the data is still being downloaded from the server in an asynchronous manner, which we will talk about shortly. And so, you know, you could end up with the uh, the dreaded spinning pinwheel or the, the hourglass that you've come to know and love with Windows and, and earlier versions of Apple and so on. So that's the end of a quick overview of Spring Web MVC. Really, the, the main point of giving that overview is to compare and contrast it with what we're about to talk about next, which will be Spring Web Flux.